All right, welcome to another edition of the Social Proof Podcast, where we find super dope people that do super dope stuff. And uh, we try to extract the information, man, because um, I think it's important to not only be good at what you do, but be able to talk about it. And you have a very interesting journey, Miss Sabrina Parr. How are you? I'm doing well. Oh, man, I'm excited about this interview. So am I. I really, really am. <laughs> um, because it's, uh, I, 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 and I was looking for interviews, and it's very hard to get into your brain and your mind and how you built this amazing brand uh, because it's clouded with TV stuff and tablet yeah. stuff. Tell me about it. <laughs> so it, it, for, for those that don't know, I guess, like how would you, dis, how would you introduce yourself? Um, I am a survivor. Mm -hmm. I also feel like I am one of the strongest women that I know mm -hmm. and 100% um, overcomer. And just have a very creative, intelligent mind. Okay, okay. So we're gonna, we're gonna get into that mind. I'm gonna pick your brain a little bit. Okay. okay. So I, I guess at, from an entrepreneurial standpoint, I guess uh, tell the people what it is that you do. Okay, so um, I own a fitness company. It's called Sabrina Parr Fitness. It's almost like a rebrand. Um, it started off as my fit, health, and fitness. Then in transition to just get up to par. Now I'm kind of moving it to Sabrina Parr Fitness gets you up to par, you know? Mm, okay. So um, just everything under the umbrella of Sabrina Parr Fitness. But mm -hmm. um, pretty much I offer products and services that help keep you up to par mm -hmm. in every aspect. And so right now it's mostly, you know, nutrition, weight loss, um, the very popular waist trainer, mm -hmm. detox tea, um, I have a great booty building plan. I'm, I'm an all natural girl. So my whole, you know, plight and my message to women is if you desire to be natural, you know, which mm. is nowadays a really big if, I can help you out with that, mm. you know, and just really becoming um, comfortable with who you are, like what you already have, the things you can change, great, let's change them. Yeah. The things you cannot change, let's love them where they're at, you mm -hmm. know? And, like, that's really just my message with my brand. Gotcha, gotcha. So um, I saw that I thought the most interesting thing was the, the butt lifting program. <laughs> Everyone you know has what? their own name. Yo, I, I know, right? <laughs> Get your butt up the par, okay? <laughs> uh, I, I thought that was dope because I thought that um, that if you was bad built, you just bad built. You ain't got no butt. You ain't got no butt. No, absolutely not. Ex explain how you develop this. <laughs> it's called the Booty Building with Brina okay. program. Okay. Um, so... You know, life hit me at one point, right? Mm -hmm. And so my body changed drastically. Two kids went through a very vital divorce. You know, um, a period of time I was unable to work out. I was unable to eat healthy. And so my body changed. Mm -hmm. And instead of just going under the knife and, you know, faking it and just saying, oh, cut this, add that, put this here. I said, you know what? I once looked this way, you know, so I'm going to see if I can get back to this. And just by dieting, working out properly, and I did, you know. And during my journey, I was just like, wow, there's so many people that truly believe this cannot be done, mm -hmm. you know. And through my story and my testimony, and when I first started years ago, you know, I kept track of my before and afters. I'm showing, I'm documenting, right. you can do this, yeah. you know, if you desire to. Um, and so that's just kind of how it got started. Were you ever big? Because you don't seem like you're big. For, okay, so the language I use with my clients and my par setters is what I call them. You know, you're overweight means any weight you're not comfortable with. Mm, I you like know, that. so because you, no one can say what you are, what you should be. Like we all have an image of ourselves. So I was at a point where. I was not comfortable at the weight I was at, mm -hmm. you know, and it wasn't even the overall weight. It was just my aesthetics, you know, just this was hanging, this wasn't toned, this was down, I wanted it up, you know. So, um, you, you know how we could kind of see people and be like, oh, they look like they drink or they look like they just had a baby, you know, mm -hmm. like <laughs> I look, I didn't look in shape, you mm -hmm. know, and so on the contrary, we see a, a healthy man or woman and we say, wow, they must really work out. You know, so I wanted to be identified as, are you a trainer? You know, like, 
I am, you know, right, like right. that's always walking marketing. So I got to a point where, yep, I didn't look like a trainer anymore. I just looked like a normal woman, you know, maybe who just had a couple kids. Mm -hmm. We all know what that can be like. Yeah. Oh, she has some kids. She's fine. You know, and I didn't so want... you were in shape first. Yes. You were at your ideal shape, and then you yes. had two kids. Yes. And then you were, ah, this, I, don't, I don't like this. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, it, and it was kind of like a process. Like, first kid, okay, I kind of came back from that. Okay, here comes another one. Okay, I came back from that a little slower this time, <laughs> you know. Then going through the divorce. Okay, that was just a lot of changes, you know. And so, and, and I'm, I don't know what questions you may ask me throughout the interview, but there was a period of time where, like I said, I couldn't work out. I couldn't um, eat healthy for at least six months. That did a number on my body, was so. It, you couldn't work out, you couldn't eat healthy? In terms of like mentally, like you just. Just, just where I was, I wasn't allowed. You weren't allowed. Mm-hmm. I was incarcerated. You were incarcerated. <laughs> I was trying to see how, how far you dug <laughs> with your investigations. Wow. Yes, I was incarcerated. So in the facility that I was in, literally exercise was referred to as horseplay for women. And what if, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. How's exercise? They were some haters. Okay. They were haters. They were haters. They just didn't. They were overweight. You can't be in your cell, get your, you know what I mean? Your crunches When it's on overcrowded you. and when it's really just like a, a cot and a toilet seat, not really. It's not the most ideal. You know, it's like you got to be the most, I mean, even the most determined person can't do that every single day. You know, like you need to move around a little bit. You might need to have some equipment. You know, when I first got there, I tried the whole push-up thing, and mm -hmm. they were like, nope, you can't do that. Really? Really. But men, when they're incarcerated. Men are different. Yeah. Men are different. You know, I think they feel like they have testosterone. They need to do this. They were already doing this on the outside. There's a mis misconception with women. Women aren't allowed to. And the facility that I was in, no. Mm. No. Wow. And so I had to literally focus my mind elsewhere. Instead of just being upset that I can't do what I normally do, I had to focus on something else, which mm. is how I created the Get Up Depart brand. Wow, which leads me <laughs> to a whole other question, okay? How do we get there? How did we get into being How incarcerated? Get locked up? Yeah. Okay, so, uh, and I'm totally comfortable talking about this. I can't believe you didn't find this. I was looking for the positive Sabrina part. I was well, looking for the success story of the brand. Thing. That's what I was digging for. This is successful because, you know, everyone sure. always has a starting point, mm -hmm. you know, to get to their success, you know. And that's why I said I'm a survivor. I'm an overcomer. So um, my marriage was very vital, okay? I ended up being incarcerated on a felony charge of assault against my ex-husband. Um, now, the positive thing is... I filed an appeal, I won the appeal, the charges got overturned, but that was a six month process. For sure. Um, so I still did six months. Okay, take me to the moment though, that landed you in jail. Like what, what happened to where you get in trouble? Was he a- Oh, wow. Um, you know, I wasn't aware of the laws in Ohio. Okay, so there is a- I only asked you because you said you're super comfortable. No, I am. Okay, I um, There, there's a law that says there's a no there's a no self defense law in Ohio. At least it was then. So basically, what that means is if you slap me, and I slap you back, I'm the victim. If you slap me, and if I, I slap you and you slap me back, you're the victim. Correct. That makes sense. If you slap me and I punch you and you fall and hit your head, you're the victim. Okay, so the law says you have to respond with equal or lesser force. How do you order, do that? Like, I don't know. I don't know because <laughs> I didn't do it. I oh, my goodness. I'm still figuring it out. I haven't achieved it yet. Like you somebody know? punched me. I can only punch you I'm once. I'm like practice on my kids. Hit me. Let me hit you back. <laughs> you know, wow. I don't know. It was through that process that I learned that you just can't get yourself in those situations in this state. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just what it is. Since then, laws have changed. Now they're allowing people to have guns, you know, like. They're more into, please defend yourself. How long ago was this? Um, this was 2015 when I was originally incarcerated. Gosh, and so, um, you know, and I remember even asking the officer, sir, you know, if you and I are fighting, you know, how do you measure your strength mm. in that moment when you're in a fight or flight situation? The, prob the initial problem was it was just him and my ex-husband, my husband, 
and myself, so there were no witnesses. There was no mm. one to determine what really happened, which is why the charges got overturned, and I won my appeal. Did he press charges? He did. He did. You must have gave him that work. I mean, <laughs> you know, I'm a strong girl. For, and, for you a know, man to be like, no, get her, get her, get her, please. Or you know what? Ego is mm -hmm. crazy. You know, the male ego. Like, I'm going to do a whole study on it. You know, um, it, it's, it's, it's really a reality that you create mm -hmm. that does not exist, but you believe it because you created it in your mind, you mm -hmm. know. But um, regardless of what happened, you know, um, we got through that. He is a great dad. We get along well. He's remarried. He has a beautiful wife. I get along great with her. Like, this is a success story. You know, most people in my situations would have held on to that grudge forever. Still would not have been able to co-parent. Yeah. Still, like, he ruined my life if it wasn't for him. I look at it like, wow, I needed that time. You know, I needed, regardless of how I got the time, mm -hmm. I needed it to regroup, to heal, to breathe, to grieve, you know, um, to really just sit down and figure out what God wanted me to do with my life, gotcha. you know, and thankfully it was only six months. It was supposed to be a year. So I did get out early. Mm -hmm. Um, but you know, I was, I was ready for that year. Mm -hmm. I was ready to do whatever time they told me, you know, I knew I have a plan that I'm going to implement when I get out, which is how I birthed the, um, get up to par brand. And ever since I got out, I've hit the ground running. And what were you doing before the time of incarceration in terms of professionally? So I still was an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. I started my first um, business called My Fit Health and Fitness. Mm -hmm. Very similar. I was doing meal prepping though. Mm -hmm. And so um, everyone mm -hmm. in Cleveland, Ohio was buying my meals. I mean, and they mm -hmm. would get you in shape really fast, you know? And the concept was three meals a day, two snacks a day. I prepared everything for you five days at a time. Mm -hmm. And it's a great package. It was $300. Um, and so it's what I did around the clock. It allowed me to be a stay at home mom. Right. It also allowed me to be very flexible in my schedule to get into shape with two babies. I had two babies right. in diapers. So we were figuring it out, you know? Um, and so that is what I started with. Gotcha. Gotcha. And you said you, you needed that time, right? Yes. So it kind of alludes to you were a different person before you went in or there were some things you needed to work out. In 100%. Yourself? Um, I didn't realize that I had areas of unhealing. You know, I had so many hats. You know, I'm a new wife. I'm a mother of two small children. I'm a new entrepreneur. I'm having to get my body together. I'm dealing with postpartum. You know, I have an image to uphold. So much to do. You know, uh, being a wife, a new wife in itself is a full-time job. You know, add that to motherhood and entrepreneurship you know, and my job was to be in shape. Mm -hmm. So I had to get there, you know, sure. that's an everyday journey. And so it didn't allow me time to really just ever sit with Sabrina, mm -hmm. you know, really figure out what exactly do I want to do, <clears throat> you know, and I think everybody needs a therapist. Mm -hmm. Like literally anytime mm -hmm. anyone asks me what advice you have, I say, get a therapist. You know, even if you feel like nothing's wrong with you, they'll find something if you keep talking yeah, long yeah. enough. You know, here, here's my here's my hang up on that. So, I actually did some uh, uh, acting sessions with Ernestine. Okay. And um, you know, it kind of concluded to you have to like really get rooted and tap into a certain level of emotion mm -hmm. for you to like be an actor. Like, mm -hmm. You got to tap into something, and I have a hard time tapping into it. Most, Almost most like, men do. Mm -hmm my emotions and i think mine's is worse because okay i i don't have high highs and i don't have low lows life is just kind of like this and i it, it, things never get bad i don't i don't feel anything mm. she asked me yo did you get she's like when's the last time you cried and i just couldn't remember and she said <laughs> well what about when you got married you didn't cry i'm like no I, <laughs> why would i cry it's a happy occasion right crying so, is a happy emotion as well right but so for me i just emotionally, I don't really feel stuff. Now, my question for you that is... That comes from something. Is that a problem, though? Well, it could be. Because if, if I feel like if I go to a, a therapist, they might make it a bigger problem than it is because I don't feel like it's a problem. But at the same time, you know what I mean? You it feel, feel more confusing? There, there are... No, I totally understand. I've done so much therapy. Like, I probably could be one at this point. <laughs> but I do understand that there are maybe people in your life that don't speak on issues. They may not feel comfortable or they may not 
you know, they may be afraid. They may feel like I don't want to bring something out of him. But I guarantee you the emotion is coming out somewhere yeah. in some way that you may not have been able to identify, you know, and that was my issue as well. You know, like I'm, I always felt like I'm fine, you know, and it's yeah. like, but you're not, yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> right. you know, um, and it'll take sometimes a tragic incident, you know, for that to come out. And then you're like, what's wrong with me? You know, so we're humans. We naturally have emotions. We're supposed mm -hmm. to feel, you know, and if you're not naturally expressing them, it doesn't mean something is wrong with you. It means that it's something that you just need to address. Mm -hmm. I think people feel like therapy means I have a problem. Right. I think... Not going to therapy means you have a problem, you I know? You know that. what I'm saying? So it's just like, it could just be open dialogue. You understanding more of who you are and how to improve areas, you know, finding new areas. I find so many new things about me when I speak to my therapist. And I'm like, wow, I didn't even know that, you know? And then there's times where she's just, I'm just like, oh, I have to get better at this. And she's like, well, wait a minute, you're so great at this. Or, mm. you know, you have time, like... It just allows me to see life differently and kind of slow down because social media will have you feeling like, oh, my God, I might as well kill myself because mm. I don't add up to yeah. all these people, 100%. you know. And so it balances you out. It keeps you centered. It helps you affirm yourself. Back then, for me, I had deep rooted issues from my childhood that I didn't know were still an issue because I'm not a child anymore, mm. you know, and. I'm not still Give in this situation. Me so um, me being upset with my mom for not being there, okay? I don't deal with that anymore because I'm not with her anymore. But if I feel like there's someone in my life that could possibly leave me, I don't even connect with that person. Mm. That's called abandonment issues. Wow. You know, so up, oh, I'm not going to give them the opportunity to feel anything because, because I think I like you or I'm attached to you and I know how that feels you're never going to be next to me. You're never, you're never going to break this wow. wall, you know? And so that's not a problem to identify, but it is a problem because I can't really connect. You know, I'm stopping stuff before it even starts. I used to date that way. Mm. I used to like try to purposely sabotage the relationship wow. and be like, just don't like me. <laughs> you know, like <laughs> you still like me after I did this. Like what's wrong with you? You know, it's just like me saying, Oh yeah, it didn't work out. You know, when it's really me saying, I'm just too afraid to get to know them, for them to get to know me and then become something, and then they leave me, and then now I feel how I felt as a kid again. Yeah. You know, no one ever wants that. Whatever that childhood feeling was when we were hurt, no one ever wants to feel that. So I couldn't debunk that myself. I needed a therapist to help me understand this is where that comes from. Gotcha. And you're still in therapy to this day? 100%. I think I'll be until I die. Mm. And I'm okay with saying that, yeah. you know, like yeah. I love it every week. I'm with my therapist, even if it's just, so what happened this week? And then she'd be like, wait a minute, that's how you handle that. Or let's go back to that because you kind of ran through that and you should have felt something when you said that. Mm, so you get a chance to reflect on everything that yes. goes on through our life. Yes. Instead of like it, like piling up yeah. until it becomes a thing. Yes. It's just like a, how are you doing? You know? And then it's their professional job to, to know voice changes and body language. And my therapist will say, wait a minute, that triggered you. You sat up when, you know, I asked you that, or you sat down or you looked that way and let's talk about that. And then mm. I'm like, you know what? That did actually bother me this week. I just didn't have time to deal with it because I was busy and you know, blah, blah, blah. I'm trying to put it behind me. And then we did, we literally deal with it. Wow. And so it never becomes an issue again. And so therapy is just much more than I have an issue and I need you to fix me. Yeah, for sure. For sure. So at, at what point did you realize, yo, I, when did you like first get a therapist? What, what point were you at in your life? Was there a tipping point or was there? Um, wow. So I think I first got into therapy in my early 20s mm -hmm. um, before I had my first kid. Oh, so throughout my career. Um, so before your child, before your situation yes. with your ex-husband. Mm -hmm. When I was going through um, a crazy injury um, running track. and Because you were like a, you were a star. I was. Track, right? yeah. And I got hurt. So I couldn't run. A small three-week surgery turned into a one-year mm. Four surgeries, you know, hospitalized for four months. I mean, it was unbelievable. So 
the thing that I used to depend on to identify me and to just, just my whole purpose in life it was snatched away from me. And so now I'm like, I don't know who I am. I don't know what I'm supposed to do. You know, I don't have a good support system. You can imagine what that was like. And so that is when I started therapy. Yeah, especially young. And was that your dream? 100%. Like everyone in my hometown knew she's going to be the in the Olympics. Like we're just waiting on it to happen. Which is extra pressure outside of you wanting this. Mm -hmm. Now you have to think about all the other people who are expecting it. Yeah. And that's a lot. But let me tell you time. what happens like when you go from being like a star athlete to like not anymore. Those people just leave you. Like their love was conditional. Mm -hmm. It was based on your ability to perform. And so when you're no longer able to perform, it's like, okay, well, she didn't add up. So we're not even, wow. it, that's, that's a real thing. So when you think of, when you see athletes that are like retired and going crazy, like empathize with them because most of those people have left them. This is all they've done. They know nothing else. They're trying to figure it out with no rule books, no guidelines, no blueprint. Mm. And then people don't even really care about you anymore because you don't bring much value to them anymore. You know, the stardom is gone. So, you know, How old I were you? 20. This that's, happened that's at a lot for 19, 20, 20 yeah. 21. Yes. It was so much. That's a heavy load. Which led you to therapy. Yes. Right? Mm hmm And so from 20 to how old were you when you got incarcerated? Um, wow, well, that was 2015. So I was like 28, 9, so this, something like that. What year is this? <laughs> um, 2021 to 2015, that was six years ago. So I was 25. 25, mm -hmm. got you. And, and and I'm only asking these questions because I, I, I told her, Ernestine, that you suggested I get a therapist and I need one, right? That's what I just said. So Therapy you, is the way to go. <laughs> right. So, but as you're going through these, you know, five, eight years or whatever, and you have issues, you're, you're able to unpack them all with the therapist. And does that help you make different decisions? Or yes. let me ask you this, when you, like right before you got locked up, did did you throw all the therapy out of the window at that no, point? No, no. Um, I was very angry before I got locked up, but I was angry in therapy. And I was angry because I felt like, why is this happening to me and not him? You know, like the system isn't fair, you know? I couldn't see what God was trying to do. I was just angry that it was happening to me. And so, but I was still sitting in therapy, very stubborn, mm. you know, and she would just fight me, I would fight back. And I would still do it. But then um, once I got incarcerated, it took me about 30 days to adjust to the fact that, okay, so you're not getting out. You can't yeah. break through the wall. You mm. know, like, you're not jumping out of the window. You know, like, you're, you're in here. There's nothing you can do. Is when I really just exhaled and just accepted the process and started my own healing. Mm. You know, and that is when I became a reader. Like, before that, I did not read at all. Like, a lot of athletes just didn't read. We didn't have time. We get right. home. We're tired. And I didn't read. I read 55 books in six months in that time. Wow. Like, I, they, my nickname was the librarian. Like, because <laughs> I was like, give me another one. Like, just really was like, who knew so much information was in books? Yeah. And it wasn't like, you know, secular books. It was all self-help, business, finance, you know, spiritual I think I read everything on forgiveness. Like, every book, I was mm. like, Mom, everything on forgiveness, send it to me. Interesting. You know, like, I need to understand what this means and why does God keep talking about this in the Bible and why is it, you know, why does he command us to forgive? You know, I need to, I need to get this. Yeah. And then when I got it, I was like, got it. What was the first, what was the first book, if you can remember, that you picked up? The Power up? of Forgiveness. Mm. Heck of a book. And it, they have, like, series, like The Power of Humility. By who? Who's author? I cannot remember. The power um, of forgiveness. Yeah. And like this this male Sad. offer. Can we look that up real quick? Um, he wrote like a series, like the power, power of prayer, the power of humility. Like, um, and so what I would do was, you know, in books, they quote other books and other mm -hmm. authors. I would write down those books, those authors, and have people send me those books. And so they will all kind of connect together. Mm -hmm. And it was like, I mean, I was literally stuck in my cell doing like doing this research, you know? Um, but when I learned what forgiveness was, I got very free. Wow. wow. Like I was like, I'm not coming out of here holding a grudge against anyone, anything. I don't care what they did because I understood what forgiveness really meant. Wow. So you, six months later you get out. Mm -hmm. Where's our life? 
Um, so I'm very poor, <laughs> literally. I lost everything throughout that process. I think the only thing I had, um, I still had my cell phone. Mm -hmm. We managed to keep that on. And I had my iPad because it was in the, it was on my possession when I got arrested. Mm -hmm. Like those are the only two things that yeah. I had. And so um, I kept my phone on. I told my mom to at least keep it on so that I could receive messages because I wanted to reach out to all those people yeah. that reached out to me, clients, whoever, and just try to get some people, try to get my clients back, you know? And then um, I just navigated through my iPad, just writing, creating flyers and just Instagram posts and trying to figure out logos and you know, like trying to get stuff off the paper that I had and put it on to yeah, something yeah, yeah. digital. Um, living in the ghetto, you know. Um, Where did you go home to when you got out? So my grandmother had like a open two family house. The second floor was open. I said, I'll take it. <laughs> Literally, like no pride. Yeah. You know, like pride was like, what? I don't care about what anyone is going to say, think like, I have this plan and I know it's gonna work. You know, like my family members are like, why are you staying over there? I said, because it's cheap and it's accessible and it's right off the freeway. And mm. like, it just works for me. Like I'm good, I'm, no one's coming over here, right, you know? Right. Like, <laughs> so it just really worked for me. And I knew the money I make, I'm putting into the brand. You know, that stuff adds up, business cards, websites. So what was the plan? Were, were you masterminding this whole time, the six months? Like, yeah, when yes. I get out, this, it's what was really that plan? It's really the reason let me just tell this really quick story. Oh, we got time. So I had a early judicial release hearing, which basically means you go in front of the judge and they decide if they're letting you out early or not based on your story, performance, mm -hmm. you know, behavior while you were in there. And so very unusual for my case, but we took a shot at it and, you know, I went to court. And so the judge asked me, um, if I don't let you out today, and I make you do the remainder of your time, what will change? And at this time, like, he's looking down, like, just reading a paper. Like, we're, we're not people to him. We're just a number, you know, they're just going checking off, okay, my 10 o'clock, my 12 o'clock. Like, this is how judges work. They do this all day. And so... He says, if, if I make you do the remainder of the time, what will change? If I don't let you out... That's an odd question, though. But it seemed like a question he always asked. Like, get to the point. Why, why is this so great that you want me to let you out right now? Mm -hmm. So he said, if I don't let you out and I allow you to, and I make you do the remaining of your time, what will change? Mm. And so my answer, the most honest, like I didn't even know how to lie at this point. <laughs> literally, I'm just like, I can't lie. I literally said nothing. I said, nothing will change. I literally said, if I have to do another year or 10 years, whatever, you, whenever you let me out, I will execute the same plan when mm. I get home. And in that moment, it's like a, a movie. In that moment, he looked up at me and he took his glasses off. And he said, Ms. Parr, I have been doing this 30 years. Do you know the stories I hear as to why people need to get out today? Because I'm changed, because I'm better, because of my kids, because I have a job, because I'm, you know, I'm this new person. No one has ever said nothing will change. Mm. And he said, because of that, I'm gonna let you go home. Wow. And I was like, what? Wow. I just knew you were going to say, oh, you're comfortable in here. Go back to your sale. I make money off of you. I could not believe it. But it was just all part of God's plan of I just trust me. You know, just go with me. I'm with you. You know, I have you here for a reason. It's, yeah. it's going to work out. Like, I'm going to sit you down for long enough, but not too long. You mm -hmm. know, it's going to have an effect, but not nothing you can come back from, you know. So, um. I just knew already when I created this business plan in there, you know, when I was married, my husband did not like me to use my last name for business. Mm. And I'm like, par is dope. Like, right. who doesn't want to be up to par? Like, <laughs> can't be up to Davis, you right. know? Like, stop being so selfish, let me use you my can't name. Be up to Davis. You know, like, so <laughs> I said, yes, this is my opportunity, mm. you know, to get up to par, like, to use this dope name that I have. Mm. And so I just started planning, like, what does that mean? And what does it look like? And how do I help people, you know, catch on to this? And what colors am I using? Like, all of this. What services am I going to start with? Like, mm. all of that was created. And so when I came home, every dime I made was for the website, the logo, the business card. What was card. the business plan, though? What was it? Was it 
I mean, it was still the fitness. Gotcha. But I really wanted to move towards... um, Not meal prep? Self-love. Gotcha. Okay. Now, that was still making me money because that's what people knew me as. Mm -hmm. I wanted to be more digital. I wanted to be more hands-off. You know, like I wanted to just get in the field and get out of the kitchen. Mm -hmm. You know, I wanted to speak more. I wanted to talk to women. You know, so I was like, okay, I'll meal prep because people know me for this. We'll take this money. We'll put it into this. Mm -hmm. We'll buy a new product. We'll slowly introduce it, you know. And so step by step. And then one day I looked up and said, wow, I'm doing really well. Mm -hmm. I've gotten too big for Cleveland. How long after you got out was this this moment? About a year and a half. About a year and a half. Yeah, so I got out in 2017. No, I got out in 2016. By the winter of 2017, I was like, yep, I'm ready to expand. I'm ready to go to another city. And that's how I found Atlanta. Really? I'm just about to go. Like, I'm just going. What attracted <laughs> you to Atlanta? You know, I just heard that the fitness industry was very lucrative here. And, like, mm-hmm. it was, like, boom. And it was, like, people are popping out here in the fitness industry. Mm-hmm. I'm like, really? You know, like, they're, like, the it people, mm-hmm. you know, and I wanted to be a part of it. You know, I wanted to check it out. I didn't know anyone down here. And I just was like, what do I have to lose? You can always go back home. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, like. You're, you're. Did the divorce, was the divorce final and all that? The divorce finalized while I was incarcerated. While you're incarcerated. Yeah, so it was like, if you ever want a free divorce, go to jail. <laughs> <laughs> They're not going to make you pay. You can't show up to any of the hearings. All right, we'll get into you strategy, know? y'all. we we'll get into practical steps. Okay. Literally, like, just do something, go to jail, they'll finalize it for you, and they'll feel like you're unfit to even, like, come to court. Wow. It literally finalized. I Like, I fasted for that divorce, though. Like, mm. I begged God to uh, release me from this marriage. And I said, even though I forgive him and forgive the situation, please don't make me say it. I don't want to be that wife, Mm -hmm. you know, like not in this situation. Mm -hmm. I don't want to have a story of it took 30 years and we finally got it right. Mm -hmm. You know, like I was like, I just want to be released. I'm young. I want to start over, you know, and he released me without me even having to fight for it. Mm -hmm. I just got the paperwork in the mail, you know, and I was like, oh, it's done. Great. (laughs) <laughs> what about your kids? Did they come to Atlanta with you? Well, at first they did not. So when I was incarcerated, I lost both my kids, oh. custody. So when I came home, my ex-husband, he gave my son back, which was like, wow, thank you. You know, but he was. You had two kids. I have two kids. I had one before I got married, and then before, I had okay. one with gotcha. my husband. Gotcha, gotcha. And so my daughter was already in Cleveland. And so um, my ex-husband moved to Arizona while I was incarcerated and took my son. Mm. So he brought him back when I came home. And he was like, you know, despite what happened, he misses you. He needs his mom. I'm out. Mm -hmm. And I said, great. So um, a year and a half later, I started the whole I want to go to Atlanta thing. Mm -hmm. So anytime I was not with my kids is when I shot to Atlanta, even if it was two days. Mm -hmm. You know, I was just like, okay, this is my moment. You know, I'm getting on a flight. It's a cheap flight. Mm -hmm. Let me go and just kind of work my way through the city. And that is how that happened. Gotcha. Okay, and I, I think it's good for somebody who uh, wants to move to another city. When you say I'm just coming to work my way through a city, what okay, is that? yeah. What's so that like? let me tell you what I really did. So the real. no, <laughs> like people always ask, how did you and how did you overcome and what were the steps? And it's literally like you have to throw yourselves to the wolves. Mm. Okay, like if you believe in yourself, your product, whatever it is that you're trying to promote, if you really believe in that, you have to show someone else you believe in that. And you can't always do that through social media and sponsored ads and things of that nature. So I started just checking Atlanta trainer hashtags and I found a couple guys, you know, Mr. Two Weeks Out was one of them. Mm-hmm. I DM'd every one of them and said, hey, I'm in town. Can I drop off some sample of my products? Back then it was my detox tea. Okay. And can I get a workout in while I'm there? The strategy was I work out, people will record it. I'll get on somebody's story. I'll gain some followers. I'll take a picture. Boom. Were you lit at this time? Um, in Cleveland, yes. Okay. In Atlanta, they're like, how can I help you? Right, <laughs> you right, know, right, right. like, what are you doing here? You know, so um, in my mind, I'm as lit as they come. Right. You know, I'm like, <laughs> it's an honor for me to be here, you right, know, right, in right. my mind. Mm. So they're just like, sure, come on, you know, bring what you got. And so I just, I just really leave an impression, you know, and I'm, I'm a, I work out very hard. Mm-hmm. So that's attractive to trainers. Like, wow, she's really, really working out. You right. know, like she's not playing. And so um, 
I said, hey, you know, I have this detox tea. I see you guys have people here that want to lose weight. I think we could probably work something out. Mm -hmm. You know, I have a service. You have a facility. You know, here's a sample. Um, try it out. Let me know how you think. Mm -hmm. I was like the follow-up queen. You know, right. um, G. Brian was literally like, she's not going to say no. <laughs> <laughs> so call her, you right. know, like every two weeks. You know how when you supply online, mm -hmm. you do your two-week follow-up. Mm -hmm. You know, I was like every week, like, what did you guys think about it? You know, do wow. you need more? Can I come set up a table? You know, like in and out. So this was like the month of January. January, now it's like January 2018. Got you. By February, I signed a contract with X28. It was that fast. Signed a contract. What do you mean? So Hold on, were I they X28 or are they RI28 at this point? They were RI28 at gotcha. that point. Yep. So it was basically, we did a deal where I would be their detox tea distributor mm -hmm. um, for their online program. And they white label it? Yes, but yeah. I did everything. Like, I brought them. My whole presentation was, this is your new website. This is your new product. You know, this is how we're going to market it. Wow. You know, you'll get a percentage of sales. And I just cut you a check. Every month. Deal or no mm. deal. And they already had a detox tea. That was a crazy thing. I didn't care. I was like, I, love it. I said, yeah, they have a tea, but they don't have me with the tea. You know, like I already have testimonials before and afters. Like, this is my brand, it's what I live by. You know, I'm giving you a whole new website. I have three interns. You know, I have a mm -hmm. whole little factory, you know, back home. Like, we're gonna get it done. And they were like, so. You know, wow. and so that is how I got All started. Like tenacity. Yes. Like especially somebody who already has a detox. For me personally, I'm just not the person that's going to bring another detox knowing that you have one. Right. Well, but I didn't I, know like, initially. I, like, I found out because G right. was like, we already have that. You know, G can be really stale when you don't know him. Exactly. We have exactly. that. What are you doing here? Right. <laughs> right, <laughs> Why right. is she in this gym? You right. know, and I was like, but is it mine? Mm -hmm. You know, like, is it? it? Try it out here, it's right here, you know? And so the difference was they had like a tea bag. Back then I had a pre-made tea bottle. Mm. So it's done. You know, like no one was doing this. Right. I don't think people still are doing it. You right. know, it's like, it's a lot of work. But I was like, you don't have to mix anything. You don't have to do it wrong, you just drink it. And it was in a really cute little bottle. And I said, you can pick out your own bottles. You know, I'll throw your label on it, whatever. It had really good boxes. You know, presentation was off the chain. Mm -hmm. So they were like... And you came uh, prepared with all this presentation saying this is it. Once After the samples, it was like my whole little scheme. I follow back up. Here, let me show you what a client will get. Mm -hmm. You know, let me show you from ordering to shipping, everything, what it looks like. And they were just really impressed. And so we signed the deal. I think the first month I made Jason $50,000. And some people really? were like, why is she here? He was like, did you make us money? Don't ask <laughs> questions. <laughs> She's here because she works. You know, and it was wow. literally like, it just worked. We got too big. And then it was like, okay, we got to start putting some money here. You know, like every, they were still kind of new. They were still kind of navigating through mm -hmm. marketing and ads. Yeah. And it was kind of like, I just want the money. Mm -hmm. You know, don't cut into my dollar. Um, but that is how the door opened for me. And I just became like the detox tea lady of Atlanta. Wow. Amazing. Literally. And during this time, I'm driving back and forth 10 hours from Cleveland to Atlanta to meet my kids' obligations. You know, they have no mm. idea I'm even doing this. They're just like, mommy's tired. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but I'm here. Right. I'm here, but I'm tired. And just, oh, it's something you guys are having. A, you know, they used to have these RI28 launches. They used to have workouts, mm. you know, free workouts. I would pull up to those mm -hmm. and I would set up my detox tea table and no one knew like I'm driving tonight and I'm getting back on the road in the morning I love it. and I'm just going to be here, you know, because people want questions. They want to sample it. You know, they want to buy it now. I would come with 500 bottles already made. Wow. You know, I would have my girls fly in. We would get a hotel with a kitchen. We would steep the tea. Mm -hmm. We would let it cool off. We, I mean, it was literally like insane. Wow. And this is the Sabrina people don't get to see. I know. Like this I grind. Know. I know. I'm so glad we're having this conversation <laughs> because I am, uh, I am, I'm motivated. You motivated me just now. Like, I don't know if I worked that hard. Yeah, and there are, just... there are certain opportunities that I want that I, I don't think I go that hard. So I think. The thing is, like, it was a big risk that I took. Trying to move cities, 
sacrificing time with my kids, it had to work. Mm -hmm. I had to say, oh, and it, I, I couldn't go back saying, oh, it just didn't work out. Yeah. Because then it would have been the people like, we told you not to go out. You don't know nobody. That's not a good plan. Mm -hmm. You know, there are people who are just have a nine to five mentality. If there's no guaranteed check, it doesn't make sense. You need to wait, you know, until you have the capital or whatever the case is. Why can't you just do it here? Why do you have to go there to do that? Yeah. So it, it was going to work. Yeah. If it wasn't going to work with R28, it was going to work with another company. It got mm. to the point where I'm turning down. I can't work with you. I have a no contest clause, you know, wow. like they pay me for this, you know, like, well, can you just help us? No, I can't. I'll give you my tea distributor here. You know, <laughs> you're on your own. But it became like a, a big thing. We want this product. We want this business plan. Gotcha. And other people, trainers start being my distributors. You know, when I wasn't here, mm -hmm. here, here's tea, sell it. You know, I either give it to a wholesaler, you give me a cut. Um, it, and so it just, very sleepless nights, mm -hmm. you know, had no time for a relationship. I didn't have time for much of anything. It was just, this has to work because this is how I build my brand. Right. And then I learned this Instagram trick to gain followers, right? So literally- You buy followers, Serena? No. This is a free thing. Let me free tell hack, you. Free hack, let's do it. It's, it's a really dope hack. And I can't credit myself. I got it from Gary Vee. But he said it before, and I think people missed it. Because it's a little tedious. But so on the search menu, you know, it says, like, places, people, top. When you go to places, I would put in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. Right? And so instead of clicking. When you make a post, you're tagging Atlanta. No. When I'm literally just say I'm searching you, right? Yes. And I go to the search bar. There's tabs that say top. Um, places, people, mm -hmm. tags. Oh, oh, before you even search anything. Right, before okay, I even type anything you. in. So I go to tags, and I type in under tags, Atlanta. And then I click recent posts. So that is everyone's recent post that hashtag Atlanta, right? Mm -hmm. These are people obviously popular in Atlanta or just active in Atlanta. I would comment on every one of their posts. Mm -hmm. And it wouldn't be just like, a little heart face, it would be like, wow, your eyes are so beautiful. So now she's like, what? Let me see who this girl is. Thank you. You're beautiful too. Follower. And I would do this to every most recent post every day, like one hour. And the followers, the engagement, the algorithm switched from Cleveland to Atlanta just by me doing that. Like, I didn't even see Cleveland anymore on my page. It was all Atlanta. Oh, my goodness. Like, it's, I know. I that is a bar. I know. And it's not, I can't sell it because I got it from Gary. But I, uh, people missed tell it. it. Tell this, this hack two more times. It's yours. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. Because I don't think people are doing it. And so, like, I've I, never heard that. I still have my interns do it. Like, no. Once, one, once a day, go under the, wherever we're trying to grow, you know, wherever that is, do this and it works. Because people are attracted to compliments and not weirdo compliments, mm -hmm. you know, like not, oh, she's trying to get on or he's trying to get on. It's really like I'm engaged on whatever you're posting about, you know. And I remember I got Jeezy to respond to me. He said something motivating. And I was like, wow, that's so true. I've been there. Like something to that nature. Mm -hmm. And he was like 100. Like my brother was like, how did you get Jeezy <laughs> to respond? I said, I'm thinking, you right, know, right. I'm not being a fan. I'm being like a fellow companion that's just agreeing with him. And so he saw that comment differently than just, oh, this is just a fan agreeing with me. This is someone empathizing with the struggle, mm. you know. And so I would do that. On, even if it was something I was like, I don't know what to say on this post. It could be the weirdest thing. I would just be like, wow, that's a beautiful background. Where are you located? You know, like, and they would be like, Atlanta, you know? But they would then, now they're on my page looking. Instagram catches that. That's like an insight, you know? Mm -hmm. That's traffic on my page, because mm -hmm. now they're clicked on Get Up to Par. Even if they don't follow me, I still get that, you know, that insight. So it just worked. That's, that's, a, no, that's how you move to another city. Literally. Like that, I, did. I feel like <laughs> if somebody's going to move to another city, that needs to be the first strategy. Yes. That's crazy. And days when I like didn't have a lot of sales or it was just a rainy day, I'm in the bed, I'm just all day. Literally, I made friends that way. Mm. It was a girl that came into the gym and I was like, Jason, tell her how she got here. Tell her how we <laughs> met. She was like, she complimented me on my curly hair. And I was like, it's the hack. I told, it was wow. the hack. And she was like, I want to work out with you. I said, I'm at the loft, you know? And like, eventually she came. That's Literally, so and she started following. She had more followers than me at the time. 
And Ernestine, are you doing it right now? <laughs> you, look, you got a face with your phone like you're doing it right now. <laughs> you know, and like, literally, like now that I'm in Cleveland, I was like, hashtag Miami, you know, like wherever I want to grow, that's the hack because it just works. It just that's makes. Brilliant. So that's what I was doing. That's you know, brilliant. like when people are like, oh, I'm having a rough day. In entrepreneurship, we have rough days. Mm -hmm. This is how you get really creative. And you still build, you know, you're still building your brand. You're still engaging. Even if you have nothing to post, we mm -hmm. have days where it's like, I don't know what to post today. Mm -hmm. And you get so stuck when I don't know what to post. You never post anything. Exactly. And so that took the place of, I don't need to post. I'm going to engage. I'm going to go in their comments. And then you can take it a step further and talk to the people in the comments, like respond to whatever their response was to the, the caption or the photo. Mm -hmm. And now they're just like, oh, who's this girl that people are responding to, you know? And it's really just about believing in yourself, like that you have a presence and you have a purpose. When you fully believe, like I have a purpose, I'm supposed to be here, people can see that. Yeah. You know how we can smell fear and we can see like, she's not really confident sure. and you need some more time. Like, even if I didn't know it was gonna work, I knew it was gonna work. Yeah. I love it. So you 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 get to Atlanta and then you kind of like plant your feet here. You move. Right. Eventually I moved. Then what? I met Lamar. <laughs> Literally. Gotcha. It happened is, that is, fast. Is that how you became like this? Because I, I looked at your page and you got like the blue check and I was like, yo, is this a celebrity? And for like, because you look like uh, Jada Pinkett a little bit. I know. You get that a lot? Thank you. <laughs> And I'm like, yo, she's a celebrity. She got to be so. I don't. I don't know what's going on. How did yeah, you? Yeah, a lot of people get that. Did you gain this like celebrity mm -hmm. status through because? Lamar? Yes, like globally through him. Atlanta. By the time like I, so I left Cleveland with like eight thousand followers. I'm like a nobody on social media world. Before I met Lamar and going through my tactics, I met like twenty six thousand. So that was still like a really nice gap of just mm. like authentic work. Sure. And um, it really made him be like, who who are you? Like, you have to be someone the way these people treat you. Because mm. I just got to know the right people and it was always love and respect. But once he posted me on his page, like months after we started dating, is when it was like, oh my gosh, you know. Um, and that doesn't work for everybody because let's be honest, like, We've seen people post people and we still don't follow them. Yeah, for sure. You know, they came to my page and was like, wow, she really has a lot going on. Yeah. You know, yeah. like she's really authentic. Like she has some substance to her. She's not just the pretty model chick or already, you know, the Instagram or whatever. Mm. You know, there's a stereotype to the type of people people date. Right. But I, I um, teach my, uh, I, I do like content creation courses and I try to, tell people we're not posting for the likes right now yeah we're posting for the body of work that somebody will see when they come to the page that's so true that determines if somebody's gonna follow and you that happened not. to me so and i was blown away because as soon as he posted me that i mean i've seen people with his amount of followers post other people and mm -hmm. it really doesn't make a dent for sure in their page mm -hmm. it's happening on his page right now you know like he's posting people and they're still not gaining followers mm -hmm. So when I, the day he posted me, I got 40,000 in that day. What? 40,000. What was the caption? Golly, what? Um, what we have is much more than they can see. It was the mm. Ron Isley song, Love Ballad. It was like mm. our song. Rest in peace to that song. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> I guess it was much more than they could see. Um, so, but it was like, and, and I didn't know it was happening. So mm -hmm. I woke up to my phone going crazy. And I'm like, somebody had to die. And someone is trying to reach me. You know, like, that was my first thought. Because I'm like, I have too many notifications. Mm -hmm. And so, um, instead of checking Instagram first, I went to my text messages. It was a voice message. And they were like, congrats. And I called them like, what are you talking about? They're like, the photo. And I'm like, what photo? <laughs> and I'm like, you know, I don't, I'm, I didn't know. And so, I, and they're like, look on your page. And I said, oh my God, you know, he was still sleeping. I said, Lamar, what did you do? Like, and wow, you did this, you know, like a, a woman loves to be, you know, sure. showcased, but it was like, I wasn't ready. Why would you pick this picture? I don't have any makeup on. Like I have on a Nike hat. Are you kidding me? You know? And so, um, it just it just went crazy. Like I was not prepared. 
mm. business wise. Like my, I had 500 orders that day. Mm. I was like, I'm not even in town to ship anything. Like we're on vacation. Wow. It was insane. So that was the learning experience. I was like, I should have had a team in place. I underestimated my brand, obviously, right. because I'm just kind of sleeping on it a little bit. How many followers? Yo, I'm I'm thinking why would it why it had that effect? Because what was he doing at the time? Was he nothing? A, he was not. Trust me, it literally was. He came from the dead and like announced this girl. Now I will say this: he was about to go on Dancing with the Stars. Okay. Um, but it hadn't started but yet. But still, exactly. the way That's I know I social media said, working, nothing. So <laughs> she's laughing at me. But no, it really was like a nothing. It was just like, I think just knowing his story, mm-hmm. it's like, what? You got you a black girl? <laughs> and she's that one? You know, like, she didn't shave and she working out. And, right, you okay, know, Omar kinda, called him a little baddie. Yeah, I see he you. like, you know, and so I asked him, I said, what made you, like, talk to me? Like, what did you cheat? Like, did, did, did I not find out? And he was like, you know, I've never... He said, I've never actually posted a girl on my page. Mm-hmm. You know, obviously, he said, there's millions of pictures of him and his exes. He said, but I've never actually posted on my page. He said, so that shows how serious I am about you. Like, I want people to know how I feel about you. Mm-hmm. And I want you to know. And I was like, wow. You know, and so first, I'm just like, big deal. You know, like, mm-hmm. you posted me. That's what you're supposed to do. Mm-hmm. But his friends were like, no, Sabrina, this is a big deal. Like, where we're from and our hood and we don't do that. We're too player for that, you know? Like, (laughs) And so I was like, okay, I didn't discredit it. And I was just like, it's really impactful. I mean, within that week, I was in essence. And it was just like, what? What What in the world is going (laughs) on? Literally, they they had an article like, Lamar Odom's beautiful, intoxicating girlfriend. It was like, they described me like I was some goddess. And I was just like... Either you've been picking wrong <laughs> and, like, <laughs> they're just, like, finally or, like, I'm really that dope, mm. you know? And navigating through that relationship, I just really started realizing, like, I'm really that dope, yeah. you know? And sometimes you don't know how dope you are until you get with a partner because you just kind of navigate by yourself, mm-hmm. you know? You're just talking to yourself yeah. and you're just with your kids and you're in mommy mode. And then you get with someone else that's also pretty dope and it's like, Oh, you add to this, you build to the, you know, you're bringing more to what I already have. And it's just naturally what I do in every aspect of my life. I've been able to bring more Mm. to the table, you know, even if I didn't know what that was yet, I'm figuring it out. We're going to strategize. And so, um, just watching that unfold was just like, people really are interested in what I have to say. And so I just continued saying it. I just continued doing it, you know, and it was, it was pretty darn amazing. And, it's crazy because the first night, Lamar will maybe admit this when he gets out of his feelings at some point, <laughs> but the first night I met him, mm-hmm. I kid you not, people were trying to take pictures with him, as they always do. And he said, she's the star. You should take a picture with her. And they're looking like, is this a joke? You know, mm-hmm. he was like, no, really, she's the star. He would always say, you're a star. He said, I know a star when I see a star. Aww. And then I'm just like, he flirting. He's trying to get something that's not going to work, <laughs> you know. But he continued to say, like, I've been to Hollywood 20 years. I know stardom. Like, when he met me, he thought I was a star. Mm. And he was like, who are you? What do you do? I was like, I'm just Sabrina. I just sell tea right now, <laughs> you know. Like, I just, I'm, I'm impressionable. You know, I shake the right hand. I, wow. I do good business deals. You know, like, I'm the girl that will go out to sit and spend money with the owner and then go home, you know, like that's a strategy. And so not just go get money spent on me and then be the girl. Oh, we know she gonna want a bottle, you know, like I'm the opposite, you know? And so, um, when they see me coming, they know, okay, if she's bringing someone or good people or Mm -hmm. we'll look out for her, you know, she, she's investing into our companies, you know, I've invested everywhere that I've been. And so, it gives me a lot of respect. Yeah. And so when he's seeing this, he's like, this is dope. I want to I wanna figure this out, you yeah. know? And so that is how the whole Atlanta thing started with Lamar. But during that time, we were, I don't know if Jason told you this, we were filming a reality show at The Loft. What was the show? Sweat Atlanta. Sweat Atlanta. Okay. It was a TI pilot um, with WeTV. Mm-hmm. We were pretty much done with the pilot. The problem was, you know, reality is fake, by the way. I'm sorry right. it was everybody's bubble, but... They had me dating some guy on there. And so at the time you were dating Lamar. Well, before, but once it became public with me and Lamar, 
that story no longer holds any weight. We can't, we can't you continue. You crashed the show? <laughs> was it your fault? I, it was my fault. <laughs> because they're like, okay, well, how can we transition Lamar in? I said, y'all don't have enough money for that. I'm sorry. Mm. There's no way you can get me and him our story with what you're trying to pay us. Mm. It's not happening. So you have to give us some stock in the show. And that is when you a producer... You're a boss. You're a boss. I, literally, I like Sabrina, literally, man. Literally, I said, absolutely not. I'm not getting a talent fee for being the, the, the talent. You mm. know, like, no. I need what y'all get. Mm. And so that's when the producer came to us and said, we'll do your own show. We'll film your own reality show, mm. which just released last week. It's a little late. Okay, tell me about it. Because it's literally called Lamar and Sabrina. Literally, it's on the new FUBU network, For Us, By Us network. Mm. Um, yes, Damon, he created a whole network with a couple other guys. Interesting. And okay. it's very dope. They have so much new content. Lil Boosie did a thing. Um, it's, it's some great people on there. Okay. And so... Plug me. We, we need to be plugged. Wendy Will just you? talked about it. Wendy did a whole five-minute segment on this new FUBU network. She's obsessed with Lamar and I. And so mm. she literally talked about it and was like... You know, it's black owned, it's brand mm. new, it's digital, it's kind of the way to go. I like it. We, our show like launched the the whole network, but like now, um, FUBU did a whole documentary of how FUBU got created. Mm -hmm. um, that was with Damon. Um, just so many dope things on there. But we were the official launch. Mm -hmm. um, it got shut down because of COVID, because a lot of other stuff. Like that's why Basketball Wives just came out. So unfortunately, the show was you two together though. Literally, and just I us two. and I was intentional. I said this show, this interview is not going to be about y'all situation. Okay, okay. But however, it's included. This is dope. Yeah, so, it's I a mean, great story. <laughs> yeah. It's a really no, great I love story. It, I love it. So, but in in the show, you two are together. Yes. But obviously, social media says different, and then the show releases. Yes. Does so it released while we broke up. So. um... Uh, it's been a hard space to navigate through mm -hmm. because it's like, I don't know how he feels, you know? I mean, it's like we signed this contract together and now he's like not Team Sabrina anymore, but you, it has to, you know, it had to release. Mm -hmm. So he's not necessarily promoting it, but he's not not promoting it, mm -hmm. you know? And so um, it's kind of doing its thing on itself, you know? How's it doing, is it? I mean, it's doing, for Wendy to do a five-minute segment on it, it's doing well. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And so... Um, What's the show about? What's in it? It's literally me training Lamar, coaching Lamar, um, working out with Lamar, helping him get through Dancing with the Stars, watching me navigate through my business space, um, talking about the situation with my daughter. So is the whole narrative you helping him? Mm, pretty or, much. So there's no him helping you, really? No. <laughs> is he okay with that? I mean, he filmed it. But Lamar was okay with that. He needed someone to help him. He needed that. It's mm -hmm. just what he needed. He knew what he signed up for, um, and he loved it at one point. You know, he really felt like, he said to me, like, I'm so laid back. I need somebody to almost yell at me. <laughs> you know, like, to literally. But for a, rea a reality show, which we know is created, like, we're going to paint him as this person who needs all this help. Like, why? Well, the difference was we were able to help produce our show, mm -hmm. which means we control all the content. And it was literally me saying, just roll the camera. Literally. Like, I didn't have on makeup. I was literally, like, in my Nike hat, like, my infamous Nike hat. Mm -hmm. Every day we're at the basketball court, you know, and they just chopped up what they wanted, you gotcha. know. And it was very real. And he even said, like, you know, the next time I do a reality show, I want it to be real. You know, I want it to be what I'm really doing. What were some of the realest moments? What were some of the things in it that um, maybe personal, like real things that most people just don't know about? Um, me talking about trying to regain custody of my daughter, mm -hmm. you know, that was discussed on the show. And me having to motivate, like literally motivate Lamar mm -hmm. to change his thinking. You know, and saying stuff like, wait a minute, you just said the word lose? Like, you're a champion. What, why are we saying that word? You know, like, mm -hmm. literally coaching him. And he's like, you're right, you're right. I'm not going to, you know. And so um, that was very powerful. And that was a, a moment Wendy showcased on her show. Like, look at how she's talking to him. Clearly, she's the dominant one in the relationship. But it's like working for him. And, you know, like, because mm -hmm. it's kind of unusual for women, you mm -hmm. know, um, to be that type of motivation with that type of guy. Yeah. You know, um, and so, but that's just me. 
I am a coach. For sure. You know, and so, and he talks about, like, me being the greatest coach he's ever had. Mm -hmm. Um, He literally says that on the show. And so that was just special to see. Even for me, after I filmed it, it was just like, you know, I was really dope. Like, it encouraged me. And let me know, like, sometimes it's just what people may need. Yeah. You know, you have to meet people where they are, For you sure. know, and that's just where he was at that time. Mm. And I and I was I was doing some kind of research on your story, <laughs> and I came across something very, very interesting. And publicly, uh, I guess you were helping um, your ex. Because I, I don't want to, like, bash him, and that's why I want to use his name, like, in a, in a disrespectful way, but... Um, you were helping your ex with pornography or sexual oh, yeah. addiction. That was right? very er- early on. Yeah. Well, I, I found like some information on you where you struggled with pornography por- pornography for a long time. Yeah. So when I got divorced, I went through this phase where I didn't want to have sex with anybody. Like I felt like I don't want anybody touching me. You know, I don't want to be the girl that's like out here just loose. You mm. know, like I really wanted to take pride in no one sleeping with me, you know, mm. So I would just go sleep with myself, like, as if that worked better. You know, it was like a, a trick I played on my mind. But I looked up and was like, I'm literally like, any free moment I had, like, oh, I'm take a second to do this, you know, and really? just release myself. And or if I'm going on a date, let me just do this first. And then maybe I'm not tempted. Yeah, it was really a thing. And then I learned I'm desensitizing myself. You know, like, I'm affecting my natural humor interaction. What do you mean by desensitizing yourself? Like, if I want to have sex, it's not going to feel the same because now I have this image of what it's supposed to feel like Mm. based on what I'm... Like, I'm using an image to turn me on. So if you remove that image, then what? I need you to do something real tricky and special. (laughs) You know, like, everybody may not have that. You know, you may not have that in you. You Mm. know, and so... That desensitizes you. It's almost like you become dependent on these thoughts, these images, mm. or this environment in order to, you know, have orgasm or whatever. I'm trying to be fulfilled, and mm. it's it's just not a good thing. It was it was so um, I don't want to use the word shocking, but it was different because normally you hear men are addicted to mm-hmm. pornography, right? So it's it's, yeah. it's different in the way you framed it just now. Like any free moment I had, or like. Um, what'd you call it? Was it an, an addiction? I mean, I kept doing it <laughs> in times where I knew, like, it's probably not the best moment, you know, like, mm. but I'm just going to do it real quick, you know. Mm. It was a problem, mm-hmm. you know. Um, I don't think, it wasn't a problem that lasted a long time because I literally was like, this can go really bad, you know, and I find myself, like, even if I liked a guy and we're dating, I'm just rushing home to be by myself at this point. Really? You know, like, literally. And so I was like, okay. I put myself on, like, a punishment, you know, and got rid of all of the toys. And that was just, like, step one. Was it easy to break? It was easy only because, I mean, I, I did six months without doing anything when I was oh, incarcerated. So when this you was were- after. Oh. This was after. This was me, like, I did six months. I don't want anybody touching me. I don't even trust these guys, you know, like I'm going through this. I'm just trying to navigate back into reality and society. And I didn't want sex to be a part of that. Oh, but what I'm saying, you, that was your lifestyle before you went in. No, I mean, I was married. Mm -hmm. So, you know. So after you went in? After. Did it develop while you were inside? No, not at all. Like I was laser focused on all the right things. It was literally, I came home and still was like, okay, if I'm turned on, what do I do? Because I don't want to have sex with anybody. Like, I don't want to be that girl. And it just became this thing where it's like, oh, no one's touching me, but I'm touching me. And, you know, Mm -hmm. I can probably do it better than you. Like, I'm just, it becomes a a mental disease, Mm -hmm. you know, because you're like telling yourself this is better and it's not damaging, but it really is. Mm -hmm. And so it didn't last very long. But when I met Lamar, I was able to understand Oh, he has a problem. Because you had the problem. Right. And even though it wasn't to his extent, I was able to identify, this is not normal, sweetheart. Wow. (laughs) You know, and you got to cut this out. (laughs) Amazing. (laughs) Or I'm leaving. (laughs) Yo, so I I, I see you leverage, um, you leverage attention well. You know what I mean? Like, there are some people that are, you know, they have a, you know, 10 minutes of fame, 15 minutes of fame, but because you keep working, the more eyes are on you, they're attracted to your work. And yeah. I think that's super um, commendable because you're Thank brilliant. You. Just the way you uh, approach business and you approach life. 
So what is one of the things that you still you still struggle with? Because obviously, when when we see the blue check, we look at y'all different, okay? I'm waiting, <laughs> still waiting on my little blue check, right? But um, that only came it's like the because and what behind the scenes? What are some things that internally that you still want to improve on? Mm, like emotionally, as an entrepreneur, both for sure. We want to touch on the entrepreneurial journey. Okay, emotionally, um, you know, I don't <laughs> want to, you know, I'm. I'm out of a relationship again, you know, just being honest. I don't want to get into a space where I, like, hate men or, like, don't trust them. You feel it coming? So at moments, I'm just like, ugh, you guys are killing me. You know, it's <laughs> like, <laughs> I mean, it just gets real. Like, the the dating pool, and not that I'm in it, but just I get messages, you know, people are, they're fishing. Mm -hmm. And I'm just like, Really? This is what y'all gonna say, you know, and it's just kind of like why wouldn't that? Why wouldn't you? That's not wrong with that. Though. It's not anything they wrong. It's just like they don't. Out, but. It's just with their, their their word choice and like the style in which they're doing it. You know, it's just it's a turn off. What's the right approach? Help help help, help us like, out. Just, help my viewers out. Like be a offer friendship. You know, like I just got out of a relationship. Obviously, I'm in a vulnerable state. Rather you see that or not. The facts are 60 days, and Thanksgiving, I was with Lamar, you know, yeah. like, it's only February. And so, and it still hasn't gone anywhere. Like, every other day, it's something with Sabrina and Lamar, you mm -hmm. know. So, be delicate with that. Like, why, I look at a guy like, why do you want to date a girl that just got out of something that public that's still trying to navigate through it? Like, it almost makes me look at you like, what do you need? What issues are you struggling with to be oh. attracted to someone that just came out of that? And that's mm -hmm. how I, not for everybody, yeah. but most guys, because it's just like they just ignore the relationship happen and be like, let's go to dinner. So when I first broke up with him, I went through a phase where I literally was very honest with men. And I literally said, I'm going through a healing process. I'm not going out with you. No, I'm not going to Mexico with you. Like, I'm going, I'm healing. Like, I'm going to be in the room, you know, mm. crying. Yeah. You know, or what a lot of women do is they just put the face on, they get dressed, they look beautiful, they drink, they kick it, they, you know, they just act like I'm better, y'all, you know. Mm. And it's like, no, I'm not doing that either. You know, so um, I just don't want to be the girl that's just like, because of the details that happened in the relationship, I don't trust anyone and at times, I just feel like, I think y'all all lying. You know, like, <laughs> I think y'all all playing games. Don't don't look at don't look at the brothers in that way. Or That's, sisters, well, that was the area of struggle. Right, that I for said, sure, I'm, for sure. I'm, I'm struggling through that, you know? It's almost like, say somebody is super valuable and they're just with somebody. Not, again, I don't, I don't know, I don't know the brother, but they don't appreciate this person. Right. Of course, I'm thinking, well, not me, but someone's thinking, this is an opportunity to be with someone that's amazing. Mm -hmm. And I, I need to jump on the opportunity. I can't delay. Almost like you're coming to Atlanta saying, no, I need this opportunity. Right. So it's just right. some ambitious man. And so when they do that, it needs to be like, offer me something different. Okay. Like a friendship, mm -hmm. an ear, a lending hand, you yeah. know, like things of that nature. Not just, oh, would you be my wife? You know, I want to marry you. Do they go straight in? <sighs> <laughs> One day, like, I'm going to just do a whole show on debunking my DMs. Like, literally, like. <laughs> and today we have, you know, like, it's unbelievable at times. It's like, are you serious? That could be a reality show. No, like, literally, just... don't steal that. Oh, it's God. mine. <laughs> literally. I'm, I say this all the time. Like, we're going to do a show where we just literally debunk my DMs and just really be like, what was he thinking when he wrote this? I mean, I have strangers hmm. that say, I miss you. I don't. I've never <laughs> met you. <laughs> And so I'm the girl that will respond and say, so what are you going to do about that? Right. And they're stuck. <laughs> they're like, oh, I didn't even think you were going to respond to me. But you miss me? <laughs> what, what did you miss? You know, like, I, I toy with them at times when I'm in the mood because mm -hmm. I'm just, I'm not taking it too seriously. Mm -hmm. But it's just like, you can't be serious. You just, and I don't want to be the girl that's like turned into, I'm just going to focus on business. I'm going to be rich and single. Like, that mm -hmm. is not my desire in life. I, I kind of see the, the 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 um the the struggle because it, you want struggle. you you desire it but maybe yeah. not right now and yeah the perception of what people would think dang she's got out of a relationship she dating already oh my god yes literally you know who I was thinking about who Lauren London 
I know. They, like, murdered her. I didn't, well, I didn't see. I'm, I'm she, just, did, she, did, she didn't do anything. <laughs> like, a, but how it's a could, rumor. It's almost like the pressure that she, I'm sure she feels. At sometimes you don't want to be by yourself forever. Oh, and you're, you're with an icon, yeah. right? Yeah. How do, how do you get by? How do you get out of that? It's tough. And I'm living through that right now because it's like, you know, I meet guys. I know guys from my past. Everyone expects you, well, you have to level up from the bar. You have to go only go up, you know, <laughs> like, can't go down. And it's like, um, if, I mean, you just, it's just what it is. It's like, if I go down, then it looks like this is what I deserve. This is the place I was supposed to be at in the first place, or I'm settling. If I go up, then I am the groupie. Yeah, I am the clout chaser. Oh, you can't pressure. win. It's so much pressure. There was even a guy like, I kind of liked him, you know, mm. like he found me, he had a name, he just like, you know, if people ever find out you talk to me, social media would murder you. And I'm like, you're right. And they would never think that like you found me in the midst of the situation. Mm. Mm. And it's just like, you have to really navigate through that space and really like with a brand because I, you know, sell products on social media, like my brand matters. Yeah. And so I have to sometimes pick between, okay, what looks better and what is better? You know, mm. like, does this feed my brand or is this just really feeding my spirit? And those are tough decisions. Yeah. It really is. Because it's like, well, I just made one a friend today. And if I'm spotted out with this friend, oh, y'all dating. Y'all I'm together. dating. And you're pregnant. And I never <laughs> loved him. And I was cheating and had him in my back pocket all along. <laughs> you know? But then it's like, mm. okay, if I just focus on my brand, then, oh, yeah, she wasn't no good. Nobody wants her. You know, I mean, it's, it's tough. So... This is why therapy helps. Mm -hmm. I, I, I learned how to just shut it all off. You know, there's times where I was like, I didn't see anything today. I haven't been on my page. That's why you have to have good staffing, mm -hmm. you know, or, or when I know something is releasing, like Friday, shameless mm -hmm. plug, my show on the OWN Network. Well, I mean, we, we don't know when this is dropping, when people see this. But. <laughs> well, February 12th, <laughs> <laughs> um, it would have premiered. Mm -hmm. But when I know something like that is coming, I'll tell my staff, Take over my page, you know, filter, block, restrict, mm -hmm. don't call me, you know, like, I just want to enjoy the moment of whatever is releasing, you know, and they're all on board with that because you'll get stuck scrolling like, that's not true. I didn't say that. Let me call him, you know, mm -hmm. like, and this becomes too overwhelming and then it robs you of the joy of whatever is happening. Mm -hmm. So right now there's so much joy in my life. Like I'm growing, you know, I have shows out, I'm rebuilding my brand. I'm actually really at peace you know, mm -hmm. like, I have so many wins right now. And I it's hard to focus on that because there's a lot of noise. And so I have to filter through the noise or literally just say, okay, I may really want to go hang out with this person, but what will that look like? So now I have, like, mm. all these safe people where it's like, okay, I'm, I've been doing hanging out with my brother a whole lot. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> like, bro, where you at? I'm coming, right. you know, I'll third wheel. But, but it's safe. It gets me a chance to be out and be, you know, just I like to talk, as you can see. I like to network and just be myself without it being, oh, she's on a date. Mm -hmm. And he's over there single and, you know, and it's, Man, it's a lot. Pressure. It's a lot of pressure. I don't want to be I a can celebrity. handle it, though. Can, can you? I can. When, when I'm ready to really, I'm not ready to seriously date right. anybody. But when I'm ready, like, if anyone can handle the pressure, I can handle the pressure. Yeah. I'm going to turn it into, like, sales. It might be a whole sales tactic. <laughs> I love it. Like, all right, I'm going on a date today, guys. Get the templates ready. <laughs> Get the sponsor <laughs> ad ready. Get in they're front gonna of it. be Get in front on of the it. page, okay? Mm -hmm. Release it now, you know, because I know, and they're gonna say, you know, you can filter words on your page so that if people type those words, they can't even leave a comment. Mm -hmm. Did you Yo, know did, that? I did. So here's the thing: the the Forex people. I can't get them off my page. Oh. And, I, and I'm putting their ats, because, you know, it's like, it's this one girl, I can't stand her, Annette something, dot 4X or something. And I'll put her name in the little search, and I can't, they're still doing it. Well, you, I think you have I mean, to you put, can't like, a phrase. Name. No, you can filter a phrase or t words that they would say in the comments. Maybe that's a verified thing. I hate you, botches. I, hate <laughs> I don't you. know. I think you can. I mean, it's what I do. I hate you, botches. There's days where I'm just like, <laughs> literally, I, I'm putting in everything I can think of, you know? So it brings me peace. But, you know, it's just, it's what I signed up for, though. Yeah. Like, you can't ask to grow. 
Like there's new devils at each level. It mm -hmm. just really is. And you can't pick which ones are going to be. Mm -hmm. Like if you're not prepared for what's coming, you shouldn't mm -hmm. keep moving. Yeah. It's just what it is. And so I know I'm going here. And you know who I learned from? Beyonce. She doesn't respond to anybody about anything. I don't even think she sees her page. And they hate on her. And it doesn't bother. I mean, I don't know her personally to say mm -hmm. if it bothers her. Right. But she's not, like, combating anything. You know, she's not switching up she anything. Behind, though. Like, they'll fight you. Exactly. So I'm building my par setters. Like, all right, y'all. I like it. I like we it. Need I, like this, it. We, I need this wall of defense, mm -hmm. you know. And it's starting to come because people are seeing, wait a minute, this is really just who she is. You know, That's I, dope that you think like that. Like, yo, I, gotta, I have to build a wall of defense. Like, because yes. Nikki, she's done some off things that people didn't like, but... Mm -hmm. People will defend, defend, defend mm -hmm. if they believe in you. And we're working on That's why I like just having good um, engagement, mm -hmm. you know, staying in their emails, things of that nature. Them hearing from you. That's why I do respond to my DMs. Like, they'll be All like, of them? no, but anytime I'm in them and mm -hmm. I see something like at the airport today, a girl said, oh, you flew by me and clear. Your hair was perfect. I responded and said, thank you with a heart. You mm -hmm. know, she'll defend me. She'll go on somebody's page and say, like Sabrina's it. not like that. She's literally the sweetest lady. She responded to me. Like, that'll be a defense. Mm -hmm. You know, she'll remember that moment. Some people, I tell my team, when someone says something really deep, send me that, I'll send them a voice message back. Mm -hmm. You know, like, they like that. Because they're like, oh, she's real. And they're like, oh, my God, you read this. Gotcha. Everyone reads it. They may not respond. Celebrities are seeing what you write. Don't let them lie to you. Hmm. <laughs> they are, you ever see on the shade when they post like such and such said something to a random? Mm -hmm. Oh, they see it. They may not always respond. We see it. Now I feel away because y'all see my stuff. I no, don't reach, I reach out to some celebrities. We see. Act like you didn't see it. Oh, no, they're going to act like it, but they, they mm -hmm. pick and choose. Yeah, for sure. They see it. If something hit, strikes a nerve, they'll respond to that, you know? Mm -hmm. And so I try to show them like, I'm here. But please send your questions to customer service, you know, like, <laughs> right, I'm right. here sometimes, you know, or I'll say, like, that wasn't me you were talking to. This is actually me, you know, blah, blah, blah. So um, all of it is just part of, like, the brand, yeah. you know, and just who I am and outside of another person. Because a lot of those followers came because of Lamar and him promoting me. And the things that I had going on, you know, and then some well, people. It seems like that would be negative, though, because if they came because of that person, if you're not, if you're in a beef with the person, they'll be loyal to the person oh, who people introduced have to pick you. Sides. So there are people still playing double sides. I see people on my page. I see people on his page. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, hmm, you just said proud of you over here and there, you know, which one is this we are, you know, but. Fan, fans are going to be fans. Mm. You know, I don't take that personal um, unless I literally know the person. I'm yeah. just like, what are you doing? We're yeah. not Team Lamar right now, you know. Um, but it's just it's just all part of it. Yeah, you know, sure. like, it's literally like, this is going to pass. You're yeah. going to remember this conversation. We're going to be laughing. Like, yeah. remember when she was going through all of that? And, like, yeah. it's, this is going to be so small compared to where I'm headed. You know, um, hopefully very soon Lamar and I will be friends again. But the success that I'm going to have without him mm. is going to demand respect. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. like I, I said on one um, podcast on the lip service. I said, if you guys scroll down three years before Lamar, you'll still see me doing the same things. Yeah. Literally, it's just who I am. Like, I'm not changing anything. Yeah. You know, I'm getting better. I'm growing. I said, but the tactic is the same tactic. Like, I didn't meet him and then start taking photos and right. start <laughs> selling stuff. You know, I've been selling stuff since 2013. Right. You know, before that, I was heavily known for being in radio, mm -hmm. you know, in TV. And then before that, I was an athlete. You know, so it's like I've always had my own lane. You know, um, he became a part of it. And my lane is still there, yeah. even if he's gone, you know. Sure. And so with all these things coming out, they're going to see, oh, wow, she's really doing her thing. For sure. And what is, give me a struggle on the business side as an entrepreneur. Oh, God. Hiring the right people. Yeah. I mean, do you ever get it right? No. <laughs> you know, it's like, <laughs> no, it just... do you? It's just like, I. there are times I'm just like, we hired her? <laughs> like, what? What are we paying her for? You know, but right now I have a very solid team. But I just go through phases, you know, of just, this isn't working out. And then it's like the fear of, Oh my God, they know so much business. Are they going to respect the NDA? You know, like, 
what are they going to say about me now? Like, are they going to just say I'm this evil person? Because I went through that recently. You know, I'll never say their name because they're not getting any free press from me. Mm -hmm. But I recently fired two people that were on my team. And they were so mad. Their whole plight online right now is to be against Sabrina. And mm. it's unbelievable. And no one knows who they are because I won't say anything. Mm. Like, they just knew she's going to respond to this. Why I'm, did you fire them? Honestly, because they were being groupies to Lamar. Mm. That's really the truth. And I was just like, yeah, I've been in fought y'all. And <laughs> I don't want it wasn't for therapy. You know what I'm saying? And it's just like, <laughs> let's just go a different way because you don't spend as much time with him if you don't work for me. Mm. You know? And I just didn't like the dynamic. And it was just like, stay focused over here. You know, you work with me for me. If he's here, you know, that's, that's a totally different story. Right. And so um, I just have really good discernment with people. Mm -hmm. And as soon as I fired them, they switched up so fast. And it was just like, I mean, I remember my manager told me, screenshot the post of them praising you. So when the other posts come, you can, if ever needed, mm. you can be like, well, which one is it? You know, because... You be thinking ahead, Sarah. I, you know, I, yeah. I like the way you think. But I, when I introduced myself, you, you said, how do I describe myself? I said, I'm a creative thinker. I'm intelligent. For sure. You know, you can't always see that through a picture, you yeah. know, or a video. But um, I've been through enough in life to be a step ahead of the game, mm -hmm. you know? So I have things in my phone for everybody, just in case... <laughs> There's receipts. <laughs> There's real receipts that I'm holding on to. I don't right. need them right now because I'm good. Y'all have any business interests together? Did y'all build anything together? that The like, people that I fired? No, no, no. I'm talking about you and your ex. Well, the reality show, like technically. y'all still have to talk. We should <laughs> be talking about but it. He's don't. supposed to be promoting it. Um, he's just not. And, you know, he has his reasons that only he knows. I think because promoting the reality show doesn't match with the narrative that he's moving forward with right now. Mm -hmm. So I just let it ride. Like, I don't bother him with it. I don't pressure him with it because it's promoting itself because it's really a good story. Right. And people are interested to see, well, what happened? You know, every time someone watches it, they're like, are you sure you guys can get back together? Like, this was so dope. And I'm like, uh, well, there was a possibility before he started talking, you know, now that he can't shut up. Dang. And yeah. I don't want to, I want to, I want to know, but I don't want to add. Okay, I'm asked. So, <laughs> who broke up with who? Like, what happened? I'm, I'm never going to say what happened. Okay. Whatever he said okay, happened. Thank you for allowing me to get it out. Because after the interview, yes, I'm I like. Know. Everyone always asks a question. And any interview, I say the same thing. Whatever narrative he went with, let's roll with that. But what I will say is we had separate lifestyles. We just had two separate lifestyles. And it just no longer worked for me to have two separate lifestyles. What do you mean by separate lifestyles? We just had two separate. My lifestyle was very different than his lifestyle. Kind of loose. Uh, <laughs> it very, a little too very vague. Things. Yes, but you know, and it's like it does. It's counterproductive for me to say anything negative about Lamar. But lifestyle, in terms of, I think a certain way, you think a certain way, or all, all, all the above. Mm -hmm. You know, just so that's not lifestyle. It's just we don't match. Mentally, emotionally. And our lifestyles are different. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> They're just different, you know. My and mind just goes to the worst. Yeah, and I'm sure a lot of people do, but it's just like, let people elude because I'm in a rough space here. You gotta understand. I'm a girl no one knew, okay? They created an image for me, and they believe that image. The more I say, the more I just contradict anything that I really am. It's just mm -hmm. the truth. Okay. I just allow, and so I remember Ange Angela Yee asked me, so how do you deal with the comments and how do you respond to everything? And I literally say, I don't. I allow my page to be the response. You know, the reality show will be a response. The series on own will be, the, those are the responses. Like, mm -hmm. it does me no good. I will be combating every day if I start really talking about what is what? And then you have to understand, everyone has their own vantage point. Yeah. He didn't, may not have saw how I saw it. Mm -hmm. I may enlighten him on something. He'd be like, that's not what happened. You know, mm -hmm. I don't want to get into that. You know, what happened was it, it, it had to end, mm -hmm. you know, and it's unfortunate. Mm -hmm. But even with that, I got so many opportunities because of Lamar. Yeah. You know, I'm never going to discredit that. Yeah. You know, um, being on own, that may not never came in that in this time of my life without sure. him. 
It's just the truth. Yeah. You know, even though I was filming a reality show when he met me, I wouldn't have been able to have my own one yeah. without Lamar. Like, and that's just that's just real. And I will forever. I need him to hear like. You impacted my life, you know, like you, yeah. you, you did a lot of great things for me and my brand and my business, and I'm forever grateful. So it's kind of productive for me to start saying, well, this is what he didn't do, and, you know, yeah. this is the problems I had. It doesn't matter, you know, because, and it's kind of productive because I'm really moving on. Yeah, for sure. You know, like, I think people who harbor there mm-hmm. are still there and want to be there, wish they were there, like, I'm really moving forward. Yeah, ideally, you know, six months uh, from today, uh, well, well, I mean, you just picked it back up with the steam of the show. But eventually, <laughs> after all this is mm. over, if we could kind of And that quiet. wasn't my choice. Yeah. The production called and we're like, we're dropping the show. I said, really? Now? Okay, so <laughs> what am I supposed to say? Hey, watch the ending and you're, you know, like, they were like, I'm sorry, but we're doing it. It's, it's going to make you look great. We, we're dropping it because we're, you know, it's just what they wanted to do. We signed a contract. I couldn't combat it. I wouldn't have combated it. Yeah. It was just like, really? Now? Yeah. It's so fresh. I was finally had like three days without the Lamar <laughs> story, you know? But um, it's really working in my favor, though. No, like, I, 100%. It, it's really just showing, whether people like me or not, it's showing me, it's showing the world who I am. Yeah, and when people get to know you, especially like even through like this type of interview where like we get to see how you think and your true brilliance. Yeah. And you didn't get here... You didn't get here through somebody. 100%. You got here because you work. Yeah, because like I said, we know people who've been shouted out and mm-hmm. posted and they gain nothing. Mm-hmm. Not even followers, you know, like those followers stuck and I continue to grow because of me, yeah. because of the information I was putting out, because of my content, because of my level of intelligence, you mm-hmm. know, because women are really like, I can empathize with you or you're real or whatever the message was. And that message is still continuing. And now I have a new message. Like, people go through breakups. I can't wait to really talk about what I did to get through this. Yeah. You know, that's a process in itself. Like, really having to heal and be healthy to come out on the other side. Yeah. And not pretend like, I'm good. Mm-hmm. You know, I got this new boy. You know, <laughs> like, because that's just not right. Yeah. That's not sure. healthy. You know, it's hard to sit there and grieve. You know, Lamar was my friend. In my mind, he's still my friend. Like, we just ain't talking, you know, (laughs) as much, you know. But to lose a friend, you know, I was getting married to him in August. You Mm. know, like, you have to unplan all of that. You know, kids are involved, you know, just everything. It's it's a lot to deal with. And then you want me to be still be an entrepreneur and run my businesses and still go to the gym and take care of my body and still be a mom? People need to learn how to navigate through this space. And I'm mm-hmm. going to teach on that very soon. You know, I'm just trying to get organized right, and for sure. exhale. But it's like, I now have a new message. You know, I use everything I go through to be a new teaching mechanism of, okay, y'all, this is what I did. And this mm-hmm. is how it worked for me, you know. And I, I, who knows what the, the number is and how many people break up a day. You know, right. like, and this pandemic, it's like, what? Like, our favorite <laughs> couples, I'm like, no way. You know, like, no way. I said, no way. You know, I'm looking every day like, they didn't make it? Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm cool. (laughs) You know, like, if they didn't make it, I was never going to make it. You know, like, (laughs) that's that's literally how I feel. I had no chance. Mm -hmm. You know, we love them. But it's just like, this pandemic is really revealing who people really are, good or bad. You know, like, there's quotes out there like, you either... This pandemic show, you was either a hustler or you or you ain't have it, you know, mm-hmm. however it went. But it's really like, you know, and I'm 33, y'all. I'm so young. Yes, you are. I have so much time, God mm-hmm. willing. Like, I look at life like, well, I'm 33. I've gotten a divorce out the way. I didn't even make it down the aisle with this one. <laughs> thank God. I'm, I'm, I'm good. You know, like, I still have time. For sure. You know what I'm saying? Like. I still look youthful. Mm -hmm. I have energy, you know, like I literally don't look like anything I've been through. Mm -hmm. And so that makes, it just gives me courage and the motivation to know like there's so much more for me. Whatever that may be, there's so much left. Like I'm literally just getting started. Yeah. Oh my gosh. This was an amazing, I do have one question too. What's harder, building a business or building a body? (sighs) Oh. Well, building a body is becomes a business. 
It's yeah, literally but, what I did. But for somebody that's like... um, I will honestly say building a body. It's harder. You have to be way, like, super disciplined. I agree. Like, militant. Like, almost like put yourself in jail because you can't eat anything. I mean, and for me, I was growing muscle, which is almost harder than losing fat because you have to... Mm eat calories all day. You have to eat more than you're exerting out. You know, it's like, I mean, it's it's really like a science. Yeah, thing. I'm trash at working out. Build it, be an entrepreneur, easy. Now Golly, see, you're you in start. this circle of influence. You're supposed to be learning from all of us. Come on now. Like, you have your thing. You get with the person that does really well in the areas that you don't do well you're at. Right. Right. And you just kind of like piggyback off. And that's what I do. I need help. We all need help. I need yeah. help. You can help me with my business because mm -hmm. I'm building from scratch right. one brand, rebranding another one. <laughs> you know, like, I don't know why For I chose sure. to do this. Sure. But during the pandemic, I was like, you know what? I want to rebrand this. Mm -hmm. I want to start this from scratch. You know, I, I'm creating new products. I'm getting ready to launch a whole new skincare line. I'm so excited. This is yeah, you are lit. literally like the athletic apparel's on the way. I just bought like 30 influencers. They're going to see my waist trainers everywhere. <laughs> like, yo, I love it. they're everywhere, you know, but all of that is like, it's hard to stay organized. Yeah. Oh, hundred percent. It's hard to know. Like, what am I working on today? Mm -hmm. What is the, am I working on? Emails, you know, like content, like, I, I struggle. I'm learning trial and error, mm -hmm. you know, and so you can definitely help me with that. And yeah, I can we help definitely you, got. We and got, I can help you get in shape. Get in shape. Oh, hundred percent. Me and so my wife is about to drop a baby, and that's the oh, only thing she talks about. Is this is your like first one? My my first hour second. Yes. Oh wow. Yeah yeah yeah. So she's always first talking is, about the, the snapback. second one is a little rough for a woman. Mm -hmm. Second second time it's, around. It's ten years apart though. So. Which may even be worse because she may have forgot how hard it was. I mean, I'm not wishing this on your wife. Mm. I'm just being y'all gonna connect. Yeah, yeah, y'all gonna connect. It's like connect. be patient with her and mm. encourage her to be patient with herself. Yeah, which I think I would have to hold her accountable, which means I have to work out, and I hate working yes. out. I don't like it. You know, how, like some people go to the gym when they're done. They're like, oh, I felt so good. When I leave the gym, I'm like, if you I don't do even it long enough, if it becomes a habit, I know you've read books and things on habits. Mm -hmm. If it becomes a habit, you'll start feeling that feeling. I promise you. Do it for make yourself do it for 60, 61 days. Just, Sixty-one. Yes. What is the number where it's like the um, the law of automation or something like? I said twenty-one. That's not true though. No, that's not true at all. It's literally like sixty something days. Mm. It's either 61 or 66. Um, Kobe Bryant talked about this. But mm. if you do the same thing for 66 days or 61 days, it becomes habitual. It becomes almost like brushing your teeth. Then your body then no longer can live without it. Mm. True story. So when you see all those freaks, it's like, oh, I feel so great. It's because they've been doing this a long time. For me, when I don't work out, I feel sick. Mm. I literally go through withdrawals. Body aches, and it lets me know, oh, I ain't been to the gym in three days. Oh, wow. I'm aching. Like, my body is yearning for those endor endorphins. You know, endorphins are released when you exercise. You only get endorphins through exercise and sex. And both you can't do all day. So, <laughs> you got to start it out. You know, you got to balance the day out. And they <laughs> they compare endorphins to a heroin's high. You oh know, like, it it's euphoric, you know. Mm. And so, it's like, we're addicted to that feeling. Mm -hmm. We know how to go get it, you know. Yeah. So I'm challenging you. And I will follow. I'm the follow-up queen. You heard yes, me say that. Yes. I'm like, it's been 66 days. Um, Why people be, be off of, um, uh, what is it called? Dang, you know I've been out the game for a minute. <laughs> what is it called? Um, maternity leave. Mm -hmm. She'll be off leave. Yeah. Literally, she'll be back ready to go. They give you like six to eight weeks we to work out. I gotta reactivate my loft membership. Come on now. Just walk on Goodness in there. You know, you, don't even, you, you good. And just start going. Just every day, mm -hmm. just say, you know, I'm going to work out. Even mm -hmm. if you don't know what you're doing, just get in the atmosphere. Yeah. That's what I did. I didn't know what I was doing. I just got in the atmosphere. And then it just start, it just start working, you know? And then you'll see the results. Results are contagious. Mm -hmm. You know that. Mm -hmm. You do something and you see a result, you're going to do it again. And then you're going to do it again. That's a fact. That's right? A fact. As soon as you see an ab or a tricep mm -hmm. or, you know, like, you're going to be like, oh, wow, I'm going back. I'm telling you. I'm not just... <laughs> 
I'm right. not just gassing you up. All right, Ernestine, she's working on her snapback, too. Oh, yeah. She's had a little COVID. Did you get so. your mail today? <laughs> Did you get your... Oh, it's coming. Every, when I, Everyone's, like, getting theirs that I shipped out this the day I told you. And it's like, I've seen it filtering on Instagram. Are you influencers? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I like... She's a marketer. I hit them all at once. <laughs> Strategy. I knew they were going to get it before my show came out. Right. So, you know... <laughs> she's lit. You need a marketing class. Look, um, one, thank you. I got to do a quick commercial, and I'm going to come back, and to I want to... Um, yeah, you got to close. You got to be real strong and powerful. Close out. Put a whole ribbon on this thing. That okay? should be easy for me. All right, cool. Strong and powerful. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, this episode is brought to you, as always, by The Morning Meetup, themorningmeetup.com, themorningmeetup.com. It's the only... Let me tell you to read it. It's the only organization that gathers every single day for the betterment of entrepreneurs. So mm. I have a community, hundreds of them, hundreds of us um, jump on a Zoom call at 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Wow. And to about 9 a.m., Monday through Friday. Every, every day? Every Well, Monday through Friday, every day. Oh, right, okay. The month, we have a theme for the month. Like, so um, last month was the millionaire mindset. Okay. So every day supports the monthly theme. We're either talking about a millionaire mindset or actually interviewed about 13 millionaires mm. just so we can identify how they think. And this okay. month we're on human behavior and every month it's a different theme, but we have a strong community gathers all through all, the, all throughout the country and we gather every single day. I definitely that want to have you on. It's so powerful. Isn't it? Women, I was just talking to Halani, Mrs. Two Weeks Out today. Mm -hmm. I said, why don't we have anything that these guys have? We're watching them do it instead of creating it. And I was like, I'm tired of it. We literally had that conversation today. I said, we need to do yeah. it. And that was another confirmation that we need to get it done. Because yeah, absolutely. I, I want to be a part of things like that. I want to create things like that. I think the support is what people need. You know what? We're going to connect. Me, you, Halani, we're going to sit down. Yes. Go to, let's put something together. 100%. You know yes. 100%. Until they get theirs, okay? Go to be more <laughs> I'm going to do something we special. May steal <laughs> your whole idea. <laughs> you need go. I, I'm going to do something very special, okay? So for the next seven days, if you join today, for the next seven days, only a dollar. Just to see how it is, okay? You might enjoy what we're talking about, connecting with other people that are in your city. Um, just join for a dollar. If you love us, just stay. It's $79 a month after that. But if you don't like us and you're like, yo, David, I don't like I don't like what you're talking about. I don't like the people that are in the community. You can leave. No obligation. Quit anytime, okay? So go to themorningmeetup.com right now and enroll for your seven-day dollar trial. All right? So. All right. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you for inviting me into Ernestine, who's here, but she's not really here. <laughs> this was dope. I've been watching yeah. you interview everyone. I was waiting my turn. Oh, yeah. Definitely. This was lit I know how to wait my turn. <laughs> you know, I knew it was coming. This was lit um, but this is such a good time. And I think we learned a lot about each other 100%. from each other. And so much I didn't know about you. Are we friends now? We're definitely friends. We're friends Literally. Absolutely. I'm going to call you and just tell wifey, <laughs> listen, this I had to do this with Jason and Halani. Mm -hmm. Halani, I'm going to call your husband at times. I mm -hmm. promise you I don't want him. <laughs> let me let, put him on the phone, though. You right, know, right, right, have to get sure. in that space. But definitely had a great time here. Absolutely. I got to ask you a question, too. Um, I like to make predictions on the podcast. So okay. I want to know where you see yourself in the next five to 10 years so I can look at this interview and say, yo, she said that five years ago. Look, mm -hmm. she's doing it today. Mm -hmm. so, I know exactly my answer. Talk to me. So in five to 10 years, I'm going to have my own talk show on TV. Mm. It's going to be big, like dumb big, like bigger than Wendy. And, mm. I know, and I'm going to literally... You know, I'm, I'm going to talk about everything. It's not going to be a lot of gossip, but it's really going to teach women how to love themselves. Yeah, and we're really, yeah. and, and it's going to be in a, in a fun way, like not boring and really using powerful stories, powerful women, and um, just really start to, like, I have a heart for women. Yeah. And I want to, I've been envisioning myself since I was a child speaking in front of large audiences, talking to people, and particularly mm. women, using my story to help them change theirs, and, and it's coming. I see you. I see you. Let's go. All right, cool. And Listen, then I'm, I'm going to be retired at 40. Remember. So. <laughs> done at 40. It's done. It's done. What are you going to be doing? At like, my kids' games, getting on the ref's nerves, and being the loud mom <laughs> that gets ejected. That's what I'm going to be doing. It's already started. Every week they're like, parents, please. And I say, it's me. I'm a parent. You know, I can't wait to just be kicked out. Because <laughs> don't call a file on my daughter, you know. But no, that's literally I what I plan it. on doing, not skipping, missing a beat in my kid's mm. life. 
Nothing. Awesome. awesome. Well, uh, Sabrina, thank you so much for coming. And I need you to close this out with something strong, okay? Because there's an entrepreneur, maybe you have a dream and stuff. Okay. They're going through a lot. Um, how could you encourage them? Okay, listen. So if you're feeling a little defeated right now, okay, I've been there. From this story that you just heard, I have 100% been there. Keep going. Believe in the vision. Always tap into the reason why you got started in the first place. We all have a different reason. My reason was financial freedom so that I can be at home with my children. Whatever your reason is, remember that reason and allow that to fuel the reason why you continue to never stop. And I promise you, you will get there. We can't close it out no better than that. Make sure you go follow Sabrina Parr, man. Just an get amazing, up to par. amazing interview. Get up to par. Get okay. up to oh, par. How did they get in touch with you? Get up to par. At get up to par. <laughs> At get up to par. Literally. And what's your website? My website is Sabrina Parr Fitness mm -hmm. or Sabrina Parr Life. But it's all at get up to par. Get up to par. It all funnels you to the same place. There it is. Listen, do me a favor, y'all. Go get you some social proof. Do me a favor. Go build something, okay? Document the journey. Embrace the journey, the ups, the downs, hills, and valleys. But then I want you to go back to your community and teach them how you did it. All right? We are out of here.